This video is about aspirin overdose, the complications and the treatment of overdoses that present to the emergency department. I'll put all the sources I use to make this video in the description below. The key points to this video are as follows. One, aspirin is a lethal overdose. Number two, it exerts its lethal effects via the metabolic system and the neurological system. And number three, the mainstay of the treatment is alkalization of the urine. You can classify the severity of aspirin overdoses by the dose taken. The one to remember is that aspirin overdoses of bigger than 500 milligrams per kilo are potentially lethal. The effects of aspirin overdose are as follows. In the GI system, we have nausea and vomiting, and then we have a variety of central nervous system effects. These could be agitation, restlessness, altered consciousness, coma, seizures, and death. In the metabolic system, it depends on how bad the overdose is and what stage we're at. So in mild or early stages, we get a respiratory alkalosis, and that's as salicylate, which is from aspirin, drives the respiratory center in the medulla. In moderate overdoses, we get the same respiratory alkalosis, but we start to get a high anion gap metabolic acidosis from the salicylic acid itself. And in severe or life-threatening overdoses, we now start to get a respiratory acidosis, often if the patient tires, and we still get the severe metabolic acidosis. And this is where people really go into extremists with a very low pH and they can die from that. So here we have the, how the metabolic acidosis progresses uh, from mild, moderate to severe. The treatment consists of charcoal, urinary alkalization, and maybe dialysis if we're in severe toxicity. Let's talk about activated charcoal first. This can be given any time up to six hours after an ingestion of aspirin in overdose. Alkalization of the urine is very important, and it works like this. Aspirin starts as an unionized drug and then dissociates to form a proton and the ionized form. The unionized form of salicylic acid can cross membranes, whereas the ionized form doesn't. In an acidic environment, we get a lot more of that unionized form, and that can get into your brain and easily get reabsorbed by the kidneys. So it's a much more toxic drug in acidic environments. Whereas in an alkali environment, we get a lot more of the dissociated ionized form that can't get into the brain so easily, and it's not reabsorbed by the kidneys, so you exc excrete it in your urine. How do you do urinary alkalization? Well, you first got to correct the potassium and make sure you've got a K of 3.5 or more. The second thing is you start off by giving 100 millimoles of sodium bicarbonate IV, and then following that you give about 25 millimoles per hour as an infusion. You've got to try and keep the urine pH greater than 7.5. When would you use dialysis? Well, the first thing to say is dialysis is extremely effective in removing aspirin from the body. The indications are very high concentrations of salicylate, so greater than 7.2 millimoles per litre, a severe metabolic acidosis of pH of 7.2 or less, any altered consciousness in the, in the case of an aspirin overdose, which is suggestive of severe overdose, any new oxygen requirement which signals ARDS, renal failure, and failure of your other standard supportive treatments, including urinary alkalization. And finally, don't ever forget glucose. In aspirin overdose, we get a lot of abnormalities of glucose metabolism and production, and it's important to stay on top of any abnormalities in the serum glucose that you might detect.